Hello, everyone. This is Michael Moore. This is my podcast. Welcome. Thank you for joining me again. It's the uh, week of May 6th, 2024. And uh, this week we're doing sort of a deep dive into the student protest on campuses across the uh, country. Anti-war protests, anti-genocide, uh, pro-Palestinian. They're called many names. <laughs> So on Monday, on episode one, uh, we visited uh, the campus of City College of New York, uh, where there were students from all the city university and city college campuses in the city of New York uh, gathered into one large encampment. And we went there just to take our microphones and give voice to the students there instead of all the pundits and everybody else telling us what they stand for and what they think and what they're doing. and all the mischaracterizations that immediately become apparent once you enter their protest and you see how peaceful it is, how nonviolent it is, how much the students care about what's going on in the world, how much they stand for peace. I mean, you wouldn't know that to, to read or to watch TV, a lot of the commentary, trashing, smearing these young people or their outside agitators, which means people of the community, people who pay taxes, people who are raising their kids, people who live in the neighborhood and want to stop by and support the students. Somehow, the new thing now, especially with the mayor of New York, is these are uh, outside agitators. The students just ignore all that. They welcome everybody to come and join them. They're very smart about how they've organized all this, and they won't stop. The police come in, they tear down their encampments. Within a day or so, the encampments are either back up or they move to another location. And then it only grows. Instead of it just being a few dozen students, it turns into hundreds and then thousands. Because young people generally don't like war. And they don't like their government backing another warring nation that is going in and slaughtering civilians, children, women, the elderly. And when I read some of this mail I get after saying things like that, well, what about, how come you don't say anything about what happened on October 7th? And I said, that's all I did was talk about that. Anytime I went on TV, I asked the host, I'm on live TV on CNN, on MSNBC, and I asked if, could we just, before we start talking about this, have a moment of silence to remember those who were slaughtered on October 7th, those who lost their lives in Israel. And, you know, I can just hear the control room going, oh no, <laughs> dead air. But I didn't care. I just thought before I wanted to talk about any of this, we needed to honor and respect those who lost their lives on October 7th. It didn't seem to matter though, because the first minute I would say anything critical, of Netanyahu or what they were planning to do didn't matter that I cared about those who died in Israel on October 7th. The sort of the rush of such anger, the vitriol, you are not to be critical. You are every 45 seconds supposed to mention the hostages. <laughs> it didn't matter how much I mentioned the hostages. Of course, all the hostages should be released period, right? I subscribe now to three Israeli newspapers, the English language version of them. It's been amazing to read the Israeli press. You get a whole different view of what's going on over there. You get investigative reporting. You have a, a vibrant press there that has no fear of going after the prime minister, of going after all the lies that the people of Israel are being told by their own government. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, I'm just so upset at the way the news is portraying these protests. And a lot of it, I'm, I'm just counting all the kind of boomer stuff where, you know, I guess all the older generations, I guess our parents did this, you know, look down on the younger ones, you know, because we don't maybe have it as together at 18. You know, maybe we're not that mature. Maybe we shout out dumb stuff. I don't, you know, I don't know. I guess our parents did that to us and we just didn't pay any attention to them. But what's being said about these kids 
and the people who are there to support the young people and the faculty and all the, it's just been friggin' annoying and I hate lying. And there's so much PR and so much lying going on about these protests and who the protesters are. I don't even want to answer some of the things that the names that they're being called because they stand for Palestinians. So on Monday's episode, we essentially turned the microphones over to the students and you got to hear in their own words why they were protesting, what they stand for, what they hope to accomplish. You saw and heard that these protests are filled with all kinds of students. It's very diverse, black, brown, Asian, white kids, Jews and Arabs, Muslims, Catholics, Protestants, atheists, America. And of course, it's, it's very moving to see how many Jewish students are at what are called the pro-Palestine demonstrations, the Jewish Voice for Peace, the student uh, Jewish peace committees. It's very moving. And you're not being told this. You're not being told that Jewish and Muslim students are working together on this anti-war campaign to stop Biden from sending money and arms to Netanyahu. So that's what we did on, on Monday. And if you haven't listened to that podcast, please go back. I, I, I have a link for it here on the page. If you are looking at the page, if you're not, uh, just go to michaelmoore.com and listen to Monday's podcast. It's the voices of the students. In today's episode, today's podcast, we're now going to move ahead a few hours on that, on that day. So this now, what you're going to listen to takes place on the evening of Tuesday, the 30th of April. We were there on the campus of a city college, which is city college. The, there, this main campus, it's up on like 138th, about 20 blocks north of Columbia University. And so what you heard on Monday was obviously very peaceful, very quiet. And within just a few hours, all hell broke loose, not from the students. The students were just there. They were settling down for the night. And all of a sudden, the New York City Police Department shows up and starts to attack the students, starts to try to tear down their encampment. And they did the same thing, too, a few blocks down at, at Columbia University. So what you're going to hear now for the next 20 minutes or so is the police try to disrupt a peaceful demonstration. And when I say peaceful, I mean no harm or injury being caused to another human being. Protesters weren't doing any of that. They weren't prohibiting classes from taking place. They weren't, they were just, they were loud and there were many of them. And so a massive, massive police force uh, showed up, started doing violent acts against uh, these students who did not fight back, did not fight back using weapons or anything against the police. They were angry and there was a lot of shouting. They were doing what students do, especially students who are citizens in a democracy and believe that their voice should be heard. So that, that's what I'm gonna play for you now. This is, this is uh, a lot of this is being recorded uh, for, by Angie and Donald who been working with me now for a number of years. And so you'll hear their voices, uh, mostly Angie. So I'm going to just uh, kind of turn it over to them and, and you can hear what maybe you didn't get to see on TV or elsewhere, what it was like to be caught in the middle of a, um, a what honestly felt like all, like you had been just transported to a police state. And he hadn't done anything wrong other than voice your opposition to this insane, maddening, illegal, immoral war that we are funding, we, the American people. So I'm going to roll the tape right now and you can hear firsthand what that experience was like. And then I'll come back and, and say a few words at, at, the, uh, at the end of it. You're standing outside the gates of City College here in New York. It's all blocked off, so you can't get inside the encampment. There's police everywhere. 
But there's also a massive crowd, as you can hear, rallying outside the gates. There's about 10 to 12 students on the other side of the gates that are leading these chants. There's got to be at least 100 students and community members here participating in this rally in support of the students inside that are presumably being arrested right now. Word has gone out that the cops have swept the encampment. some students over on the other side that Donald and I talked to at the encampment earlier today. I'm going to go see if they'll talk to me. Tell me what's going on inside the gates. Day six of the CUNY Gaza Solidarity Encampment. We have been here holding City College of New York in Harlem as students and workers and faculty from almost every one of the 25 CUNY campuses. We are part of more than 40 campus encampments across the country and across the world and on every continent and our demands are so simple. We want an end to university complicity and genocide. It has been 207 days of genocide in Gaza. Over 40,000 Palestinians are dead. Our universities are investing in the weapons being dropped on my people. And we are saying that our universities must divest. And that is why we are holding these encampments and this brutality that we are seeing here. We have reports of injuries, of arrests, of students with bones broken, of people with their teeth broken. There are so many injuries here. The brutality that is being unleashed on students right now who are demanding an end to a genocide is unconscionable. It is absolutely unconscionable. Our demands are simple. We asked for divestment and disclosure. We asked for the demilitarization of our campus. And instead of demilitarization, you have the NYPD coming down full force, not only on CCNY right now, but also on Columbia. We have seen them be unleashed on the new school in the city. We are seeing them unleashed on campuses across the country. We are fighting for liberation. We want liberation. And every single one of these university administrations is on the wrong side of history. The crowd is chanting NYPD, KKK, IOF, they're all the same. I'm a student at CUNY School of Law. I'm involved with the CUNY Gaza Solidarity Encampment. We're here right now outside the gates of City College where there's been an exponential escalation in the law enforcement response. I've been here in and out of the encampment since the minute that we launched, and we haven't seen a law enforcement response that comes anywhere close to this in, in the almost week that we've been up. They waited days without engaging in this type of brutalization of student protesters, and so it was clear that today, the way that they've responded was a policy choice. I'm seeing a lot more police uh, vehicles approaching, buses, as students chant, NYPD out of CUNY now. just walking through saying the police are kettling. If, if a cops have an area kettled, that means completely surrounded. As I look around, I see, I see cops on all sides. They just keep kind of assembling. Oh, someone's calling for a mic check. In case you couldn't hear that, news just broke to the crowd that NYU students have put their tents back up. After they were taken down, NYU students put their tents back up and everybody is cheering. The pledge coming out. Okay, there's a whole group of, of cops that are moving on to the sidewalk. 
If you refuse to disperse, you will be placed under arrest and charged with disorderly conduct. The police loudspeaker is telling the crowd that they are unlawfully blocking pedestrian traffic on the sidewalk and risk being arrested if they don't move. This is the New York City Police Department. You are unlawfully obstructing pedestrian traffic. You are ordered to disperse now to permit the safe flow of pedestrian traffic. God, cops just charged into the crowd. Students on the ground. The protesters are trying to help the people on the ground get back up, and the cops just keep pushing and pushing forward. The police have cleared half the sidewalk, and the students now are kind of pushed to one side against the gate, they're all linking arms and not moving. And now they're calling for all white allies to make their way to the front, to make themselves the front of the line that's against the gate. and arresting them. The cops have a student pushed against the side of a vehicle. He's asking, what did I do? What did I do? He's pushing back to create space between himself and the car as they're trying to get the zip ties on to arrest him. They have the zip ties on, they're leading him now to the police bus. An officer just instructed the other cops to take these bodies. Cops are pushing back now. They're pushing everybody back. Back up! Back up! Back up! Open up the sidewalk! Open up the sidewalk! You're on the sidewalk! There's mad niggas on here! Open up the sidewalk! Open up the sidewalk! Open up the sidewalk! Open up the sidewalk! Hey! Take his press pass. I 
I heard you, you bitch ass. I heard you try to whisper that. You think I didn't hear you? Oh, 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 now you're making a face. Because you're going to illegally take my press badge. For what reason? Oh, oh, you got real quiet right now. Oh, you got There's a student having an asthma attack. They've pulled her off to the side. They've gotten her an inhaler. They're asking the cops, please call an ambulance. And the cops are just standing there, not doing it. Now, now they're all turning around and just leaving. Can you tell me what brings you here today? Yeah, my son is uh, in the encampment, currently being arrested, so it, so it would seem. <laughs> How long has he been there? Sorry, is anyone, uh, four days. Oh, you know what? My phone's ringing, so just give me one second. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's my son. Hang on. Oh, wait, that's our son. Hold on. Oh, shit, I just missed it. Wait, can I hear? Can I hear? Yeah, speak up. Hey, honey. Oh, my God. It's okay. He hung up quickly, so it might have been that they We told him to call if he's getting arrested, so we think he's getting arrested now. Fuck. Please leave your uh, message. Well, maybe they're leaving you a message. Hold on. Let me check my phone. I didn't hear my phone ringing. Let me try to call. Try to, to keep calling them. It's mom. Uh, could you please tell me? Or pick up the phone or call me your daddy. He just missed your call. You said you were going to call if you were getting arrested. So we are pretty sure that's what's happening right now. Do you know if they took out the kids that were in the encampment? Okay. They're going in now to arrest. Okay. They're going in now okay. to arrest. Okay. We don't have enough okay. people to watch. Be careful, they might pepper spray. They have been pepper spraying press. They did pepper spray press inside as well. What has your communication with them been like? Uh, pretty regular. Um, up until five minutes ago. I'm expecting that he'll be marched out pretty soon, so. And we're standing here at the police barricade where they're taking students out of the university. We, we were at the encampment the past two days. And things oh. were really peaceful. Yes. And the students were really inspiring and smart and yeah, yeah. kind. Definitely. Everything about the encampment was kindness. And Absolutely. nothing that I've seen tonight. No, 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 no. NYPD is treating them really poorly. You see they're marching in like stormtroopers. You know, these are kids, this is like, you know, this is like the community's children here that they're treating like criminals, you know, so it's, it's terrible, you know. I'm just going to step over there Absolutely. and um, see, but Thank you so feel much. free to, I'll, I'll come back to you. <laughs> He's trying to talk to the police officers about what's happening inside the I'm gates, but they won't answer any questions. I got, I got him, but we can't answer right? questions. I'm sorry about that. Wait, right? but I'm saying, you don't have to answer, but, but I'm sure some of you guys got kids, right? They're probably in college, maybe even in the community system. My kids have been sitting peacefully in there, man, and now they're undergoing all this intimidation and shit, man. Come on, you know? Did you ever get a hold of your son? Did you see him? I haven't seen him yet, unless I saw somebody that was kind of cloaked, you know? I mean, it's hard to tell through all the people, but so it's possible he might have come through, but I'm not sure. This can't be everyone. I think there's more people there. Incredible waste of tax dollars. You know? Yeah, that's true. So we're paying taxes for money for Israel and money for this. <laughs> Does anyone in this line need jail support? Anyone need jail support? Give us your name or your contact number. Did you get any info? No, he kicked my foot. I said, you just like kicked my foot back. He's like, I didn't touch you. I have my body cam. I said, your body cam didn't register you kicking my foot back to the sidewalk. You put your... Your, your body on my body. I just want that for the record. Oh, and, and, and if it was an accident, just say, I'm sorry. It's like they want you to go after them. And I said, I'm a peaceful person. I'm not going to touch anybody. <laughs> I calmly talk about things. So literally, that's assault. You know yeah. what I mean? It didn't hurt, but I'm saying it's like rude. It's like that's how the escalation starts. Yeah, and especially to be clear, there's nobody around. I said, around. I'm looking to see, because see the kid right there? He yeah. looks just like my son. Are you still on a second? Yeah, I saw him. I saw oh, you saw Okay. He looks exactly like that kid, though. He might still be in there. Is that a possibility that there are still people in there? Well, they just were bringing more people out. Like, oh, they're, they're bringing they're more people out more. now. Where yeah, are they walking like they him were, down here? Unbelievable. 
these kids are doing nothing but peacefully protesting. And they go here. They're here all day today. Like, yeah. All day. And they're they're peaceful. Here. Yes. That's it's so peaceful. Thing. They have a freaking daycare where they're singing sing along songs yeah. with the yeah. kids. Yeah. I mean, it's and they were arresting people what, with the kids there. The kids were there during the arrest. She I was, was wondering that. She I was, was actually. Like, oh, you know oh, who you yeah. talked to? Wait here. Wait a minute. Where did she go? She's over here. Did, did you say that they were arresting with the kids? This is what was happening. Um, I was inside and uh, I saw a bunch of student protesters because cops had blocked off this entrance going to our Willie administration building where President Boudreau typically resides. They were going there and that's when they were mass pepper sprayed. When I that, saw that happening, I was already helping a mother who was distressed and she couldn't find her daughter. She had a small baby in a stroller. So I immediately got them blankets, gloves and masks in case pepper spray right, would come to right. us. I guided okay. them out along with another mother who also had a baby in a stroller. For, at first, when I first got the mother there were two kids that came running and I usually see them all around camp and they were crying because they couldn't find their mother so I was like all of the kids need to be as far away from the encampment inside as they can because at this point police have already blocked off entries we tried to exit one way we, we couldn't police had blocked off the entries so I'm just gathering them here and I'm making sure the mother is not going in the encampment not taking her babies and it was so hard to get them out because they were worried about their daughters and then once we marched we marched on one side I can't remember the name of the entrance it was this is the knack it was on this side there were fences barricading us. I talked to the cop. I tried to humanize. I tried to say they just want to leave. They're scared. It's loud here. He didn't care. Then next step was, will one of you please come with us to the other side? And imagine this block on a whole other side. Will you at least come and assist us so we know nothing will happen to these kids? He refused. He refused multiple times. His forces next to him, the people refused. We walked to the other side. There are fences there with officers who are barricading them and more coming in wearing riot gear and SRGs. So at this point, I'm trying to get them out as safely as I can. I have my hands in the air and I'm saying these are just children. So what they do is they open the fence and they start yanking people inside, pushing people inside, including the kids. They couldn't care less about kids and babies and strollers, actually. They were pushing them all outside and then finally they were safe. And yeah, it was really traumatizing. The kids were shaking. I was trying to do deep breaths. Recently, 30 minutes ago, we had someone have an asthma attack as police were marching behind us. I had to put my hands in the air with other people to stop them, help the person having an asthma attack. We yelled, can you call an ambulance? Can you please call an ambulance? And they refused. They didn't even acknowledge that. Yeah, Some they, of them chuckled. literally ran away. Some of them chuckled. The others, actually, after that, when we were, I was helping her breathe, we were getting inhalers, water. They turned the other way. They turned their backs on us while I'm yelling at their backs, can you call an ambulance? ambulance for us and they refused. Shortly after finally an ambulance was called and then she was in there safely. Now if there were other kids in that encampment and I didn't know about it because I was gathering as much as I could, we don't know what would happen because these cops are walking with batons in their hand, y y chewing gum nonchalantly and they're going in and brutalizing students, you know what I mean? So we wouldn't know what would happen if there were other kids. Thank God I noticed and thank God I got people to help me round up the kids. Otherwise there would be two little children and a baby in a stroller, another baby in a stroller, lost and not knowing what to do. So this is all through our community effort for a free Palestine. This is how we treat our people and this is how they treat us. They don't see us as them, they see us as the other. There is a power imbalance here just as there is in um, Palestine and Gaza. We really came down to provide support. We brought, we have all these extra rain jackets for tonight. But they had a feeling that they were going to be kind of storming in tonight. Like they were, they? and they were figuring a way to be very peaceful and to get to just so not to let today, them just. Like, they're so the peaceful. Yes, yeah. And they're so brilliant and they're so smart and they're on the right side of this. You know what the first thing they said in the big meeting? They were like, what? we need to come up with protocol yes. on how to protect our, the people here with disabilities. Yes. Because if the cops storm in, we need to yes. know how they can get out Get out, safely exactly. Like they were raised right. They were raised to, to defend people. When Occupy Wall Street was going on, we were supporting that and they were coming with us to support that. So they were kind of raised to be a peaceful protester. You protest the justices in the world, not just in your immediate little bubble. It's a global situation and we're very enmeshed in this situation as a country and it's so sad. It's so sad all of the ways we have our tentacles, right? Because we're colonizers too. We're colonizers too. We've committed genocide ourselves. Well, we're paying for this one. And yes. we're funding this genocide, absolutely. Billions of dollars, billions of dollars. So they're on the right side of this, you know? And I just can't wait for this generation to be hopefully getting into these positions of power where they can actually change the world, you know? Really change it. This is the generation that I think is gonna save us or we're just gonna keep destroying ourselves, you know?
because this is pretty um, intense what's going on right now like this is back there from 1968 and we had a talk with our kids today first it was like don't get arrested then it's like you're getting arrested just be safe and don't get killed you know be smart oh wait is that more people oh they're going back in again uh, they're going back in Wow, that was really moving. Afterwards, we all got back together inside my apartment uh, in New York, went over everything that just happened. It was it was pretty intense, pretty tense, and it was it felt really good. I think for everybody to stand with the students. I think it just I think it was just so shocking to everyone. Maybe not so much to me because I mean I've you know first demonstrations I went to were during the Vietnam War, so. Nothing probably I hadn't seen before, and I've, I've seen much worse. I just uh, have an overwhelming sense of pride in our young people. I want to talk about that, but I, at first let me thank our underwriter for today's episode, uh, Stamps.com, and encourage all of you to support them, thank them for supporting me in this podcast. And if you're the kind of person that does a lot of mailing or shipping, you should check them out, Stamps.com. They'll make your life a whole lot easier just getting packages and things across the country and around the world. You get access, full access, not only to the Postal Service, but UPS and all their mailing services. When you do business with them, you can do it right from your computer or your phone, day or night, 24 hours a day. No lines to stand in, no traffic to get through, no waiting. All you need is a computer and a printer. And they even send you a free scale in case you have to weigh the package you're sending. You can easily schedule package pickups through stamps.com on their dashboard. You can order shipping supplies and labels and even printers from their supply store. And here's the best part. You get rates that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 89% off some postal service and UPS prices. So make use of stamps.com. It's a no-brainer decision. Over 1 million other businesses and people use stamps.com. You sign up right now with the promo code RUMBLE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. There's no long-term commitment, no contract you have to sign. Just go to stamps.com, click the little microphone that's at the top of their page, and right there you just enter the code RUMBLE, R-U-M-B-L-E. And thank you, stamps.com, for supporting this podcast. Much appreciated. Now, um, let's get back to the students. I don't understand why fellow boomers are uh, being so snide and snarky about them or, you know, telling them they're a bunch of idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand the history. They don't, jeez, you know, what they understand is right and wrong. And the fact that they are not apathetic and they are not, they don't want to be silent. These are all very positive things. And you may not agree with everything they say or do or whatever, but Nonetheless, they're not out there to hurt anybody. They've not hurt anybody. There's no police officer that was sent to the hospital. None of that. None of that. And yet they're ridiculed in the media, on the internet. But I understand there are big stakes involved here. And sadly, there are some people that can't bring themselves to be critical of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and his regime, his war council. All I can do is just encourage you to get the facts, read the Israeli press, watch their TV. They do a very good job, a lot of them, of covering what's going on over there, stuff that we don't see on the nightly news here. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Angela Vargos, for being the executive producer of this podcast and the editor. Thank you to Donald Bornstein for going up there to the campuses and a couple of other people I think who want to just remain anonymous because they they want their jobs <laughs> tomorrow. We'll be back in a few days with part three, third episode of this week's podcast and hopefully bring this together and hopefully share some good news. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you in a few days. I'm Michael Moore.